Good morning. Good morning. I'd like to thank you guys for coming out on behalf of the Diversity Council. Um, we appreciate you for taking time out of your busy schedule to come join us in the celebration of our Black History Program. Um, the program, of course, is designed to inform, give a little bit more insight, and hopefully inspire some of you to, of course, continue to do greater things in life beyond Jefferson Davis Community College. No further ado, the program will follow um, as print. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Janelle Rollison, and now we're doing the history of black history. The story of Black History Month begins in 1915, half a century after the 13th Amendment. Abolished slavery in the United States that September the Howard trained historian Carter G. Woodson and the prominent minister Jesse E. Moreland founded the Association for the Study of Negro Life and History known as ASNLS, an organization dedicated to researching and promoting achievements by black Americans and other people of African descent. Known today as the Association for the Study of African American Life and History, known as ASALH. The group sponsored a National Negro History Week in 1926, choosing the second week of February to coincide with the birthdays of Abraham Lincoln and Frederick Douglass. The event inspired schools and committees nationwide to organize local celebrations established the history clubs of host performances and lectures. In the decades that followed, mayors of cities across the country began issuing yearly proclamation recognizing Negro History Week. By the late 1960s, thanks in part to the civil rights movement and growing awareness of black identity, Negro History Week had involved in the Black History Month on many colleges campuses. President Gerald R. Ford officially recognized Black History Month in 1976, calling upon to the public seize the opportunity to honor the too often neglected accomplishments of black Americans in every era of endorser throughout our history. Since then, every American president has designed February as Black History Month and endorsed a specific theme. Other countries around the world, including Canada and the United Kingdom, also devote a month to celebrating black history. The 2013 theme, Across the Crossroads of Freedom and Equality, the Emancipation Proclama Proclamation, and the March of Washington, marks the 150th and 50th anniversaries of two proud events in African American history. Thank you. Good morning, Ms. Mariah Trujillo. I'll be reading a poem by Maya Angelou called Human Family. I note the obvious differences in the human family. Some of us are serious, some thrive on comedy. Some declare that lives are lived are as truly prof profundity. And others claim they really live and they're really reality. The variety of our skin tones can confuse, bemuse, delight, brown and pink, and beige and purple, tan and blue and white. I've sailed upon the seven seas and stopped in every land. I've seen the wonders of the world, and I get one common man. I know 10,000 women called Jane and Mary Jane, but I've not seen any two who really were the same. Mirror twins are different, although their features jive, and lovers think quite different thoughts while lying side by side. We love and lose in China, we weep in England's moors, and laugh and moan in Guinea, and thrive on Spanish shores. We seek su success in Finland, are born and die in Maine. In minor ways we differ, in major we're the same. I note the obvious differences between each sort and type, but we are more alike, my friends, than we are unalike. We are more alike, my friends, than we are unalike. We are more alike, my friends, than we are unalike. 
Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Ooh, I didn't know there were so many people back there as I stood up. <laughs> I am here to introduce our guest speaker for this morning. Our guest speaker is Reverend Danny Benjamin. Reverend Benjamin was called to preach in 1986. He has studied at the theological school at the Evergreen District Ministry School and became an ordained minister in, of the gospel of Jesus Christ in 1988. Reverend Benjamin is a local pastor and pioneer who has dedicated his life to spreading the gospel and leading people to Christ. Reverend Benjamin currently pastors at the Bethesda Missionary Baptist Church in the Nitchburg community in Connecticut County. He is retired from Exxon Mobil with over 33 and a half years of dedicated services. Reverend Benjamin is an active member of the Bruton and the Evergreen community. He has initiated countless ministries within the church and community. He was the first African American to be elected to the Escambia County School Board and has remained a faithful servant to the educational community in that capacity for over 27 years. He also serves as the moderator of the Bethlehem Number no. 2 District Association in the Clausell community and chaplain of the W.S. Neal uh, Football League. Reverend Benjamin and his wife, Janet Rose, have four children and two grandchildren. I present to you our speaker for this morning, Pastor Danny Benjamin. Good morning. I am delighted to be here today, and I'm thankful to uh, all of you for your presence here today. And I'm going to remove my watch right now because it is very, very difficult for a Baptist preacher to preach for 15 minutes. <laughs> but I'm certainly going to try today. I'm so grateful for this opportunity to be at Jeff Davis again. And first, I want to thank uh, Minister McCrary for such a beautiful introduction. I want to thank all of you for your attendance here today. Uh, President of this great college, Dr. Blow, in his absence, faculty and staff and all of you students who are here today. Forty years ago, I walked the campus of Jeff Davis College, and I was proud to do so. In 1975, I was a student here. And I ask now that you would please listen to what God has given me to say today to this August crowd. Let the words of my mouth the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. I want to talk about pavers of the way. Pavers of the way. History is a study of human past. In the past, it had been uh, left by many traces, including traditions, folk tales, works of art, archaeology. And it has been said that if we, as a people, don't learn from history, history is destined to repeat itself. Black history in the United States is characterized by a collection of movements, continents, battles, heroes that span more than 200 years. It is made up of both terrible tragedies and hard-worn triumphs. Although much has already occurred, black history is still evolving today. Dr. Kane Hope Fielder, PhD, general editor of the original African heritage edition of the Holy Bible, also professor of the New Testament languages and literature at Howard University in Washington, DC. Dr. Fielder states, far too long in the history of Western civilization, Persons of African descent have been stereotyped in negative ways which have caused African Americans to question not only their own identity, but also their part in God's plan of salvation. Afrocentricity, the idea that Africans and persons of African descent must be understood as making significant contributions 
to the world's civilization as proactive subjects within our history, end of quote. And I'm extremely grateful to our Heavenly Father for allowing us to have this time to share with you today a few golden nuggets about black history. What a blessing it is to have an institution of learning such as Jefferson Davis Community College, an awesome college, preparing young men and women to take the challenges, to take on the challenges of today and tomorrow, and to become productive citizens and to do great things in their lives. I thank God that I was a student at Jeff Davis College, and I will never change that for anything else in the world. My desire, young men and women, was to go to the University of Alabama and play for Bear Bryant when I got to meet him at Neal High School. But that fell through. But there was always another opportunity, and Jeff Davis was it. But I salute Jefferson Davis, the faculty and staff, and the president for taking time to celebrate black history. Briefly, I would like to speak to us about people who have paved the way for a better day for African Americans. And not only for African Americans, but those who have paved the way for all Americans to have a better day. The year was 1955, just one year before my birth. In 1955, Dwight Eisenhower was President of the United States. Richard Milhouse Nixon was his Vice President. In God We Trust was added to all paper currency in 1955. In 1955, Disneyland opened its doors in California, and the rest is history. In 1955, Hurricane Diane hit the Northeast United States, killing 200 people and causing over a billion dollars in damage. In 1955, the average cost uh, of a house was $10,950. Wow. <laughs> the average monthly rent in 1955 was $87 a month. The average income was $4,130. The minimum wage in 1955 was a dollar. Can you believe it? In 1955, the cost of a new car was $1,900. And a gallon of gas was 23 cents. In 1955, a young man by the name of Emmett Till was murdered in Money, Mississippi beaten beyond recognition. The only way his loved ones could identify him was because of a ring that he had on his finger that his grandfather had given him. In 1955, December the 1st, a tired seamstress by the name of Rosa Parks, a respectful citizen of Montgomery, Alabama, quietly refused to give up her seat to a white man on a bus in Montgomery, Alabama. Mrs. Parks described this episode as the event that triggered the Montgomery bus boycott, and it signaled the end of segregation in the South. Mrs. Parks was arrested and jailed, of course, for not giving up her seat. Dr. Martin Luther King was quoted as to say, it was the beginning of a movement when 50,000 African Americans, men and women, absolutely refused to ride the Montgomery buses. For 381 days, they walked to work. They stuck together. Dr. King stated, we sent out a call that no Negroes were to ride the buses. It was the most amazing thing I'd ever seen in my entire life, says Dr. King. The people of Montgomery asked me to serve as the president of this new organization called the Montgomery Improvement Association. It came to be. Dr. King said, I could not say no, and he said yes. Thus began the struggle for equal opportunity, better thing for all people, especially people of color. With many marches, protests, boycotts, and yes, the shedding of blood, people lost their lives for freedom. And not only black people, but they were white brothers and sisters as well, who thought it was wrong for a brother or a sister not to have the right to do the thing that they were so desired. We did not walk alone, and we do not walk alone today. We are grateful to those who have paved the way for a better day in America. 
We are grateful for those who have gone before us to do even greater things than we could imagine. Many of our dreams have come true by the grace of God and those who have paved the way. It has been said that if you see a turtle on a fence post, you know he didn't get there by himself. He had some help to get there. All of us here today, black, white, Hispanic, it doesn't matter what your nationalities are, someone paved the way for you. Are you with me? Thank God for the pave, pavers of the way. People like Frederick Douglass, Harriet Tubman, Sojourner Truth, Nat Turner, Dr. George Washington Carver, who changed the agricultural life in the South forever. The bow weevil was taking the cotton by storm. Dr. Carver said if you plant peanuts, if you plant peanuts, the nutrients will go back into the soil and also it will be a cash crop. And so finally, they planted peanuts, Mrs. Culver. And then all the farmers said, Dr. Carver, what are we going to do with all these peanuts? And Dr. Carver has stated in his book, The Man Who Talks to Flowers, he said he went into his laboratory and he asked his great creator, what do I do with the peanuts? God gave him all the recipes to do with the peanuts. <laughs> Dr. Carver was a remarkable man. Dr. Ralph Bunch, Dr. Charles Drew, Langston Hughes, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Medgar Evers, Rosa Parks, Ms. Coretta Scott King, Reverend H.K. Matthews, Mr. James Walter Green, Mr. Eugene Stallworth, Ms. Liston Stallworth, just to name a few. And yes, the 44th President of these great United States, President excuse me, Barack Obama, are all pavers of the way. I want to ask every faculty member to stand today. Every faculty member in this room, would you please stand? If you're already standing, just wave your hand. Students, I want you to give a round of applause for these pavers of the way. You may be seated. They are paving the way for you to live a better life. They are paving the way for you to be able to compete in a global economy. They are paving the way for you to have a family with a father and a mother to make adequate means, not to live below the poverty level. They are paving a way for you to think more of yourself than you could ever dream of. All right? I've listed some pavers of the way, but there's one in particular that really blessed me my paper of the way is 101 years old. My paper is my dad. He was born in 1913 in a very, very tough situation. Daddy's still living. And every once in a while, I said, Daddy, God has really blessed you. Dad. He said, yes, son, he sure has. But there's one other paper of the way that you know very well, and I'm closing now. But this paper of the way, he never saw the beauty of the red rose. This paper of the way never saw a sunset, no sunrise. God gave him miraculous talents that we will never ever forget. This paper of the way said in his song, Heaven help the child who never had a home. Heaven help the girl who walks the streets alone. Heaven help the roses if the bombs begin to fall. Heaven help us all. Heaven help the black man if he struggles one more day. Heaven help the white man if he turns his back away. Heaven help the man who kicks the man who has to crawl. Heaven help us all. Heaven help us all. Heaven help us all. Heaven help us all. Heaven help the boy who won't reach 21. Heaven help that man who gave that boy a gun. Heaven help the people with their backs against the wall. Lord, heaven help us all. Stevie Wonder said, now lay me down before I go to sleep. In a troubled world, I pray the Lord to keep. Keep hatred from the mighty and the mighty from the small. Heaven, help us all. God bless you. God bless you.
Council, we'd like to present this certificate of appreciation to Reverend Danny Benjamin for an outstanding, lasting contribution to a carousel of progress in African American history. Bless you. <laughs> Good morning. In the absence of our interim president, uh, Dr. William Blow, who had the tenor president's meeting today, I would like to thank Reverend Benjamin for his enlightening and very powerful message. I would also like to thank all of you for your attendance and support here today as the college set aside this time to remember those who have paved a path of opportunity, to remember bold visionaries who dared to dream, fearless leaders that challenged the status quo, and those who defied the odds and changed the course of American history. This year, our country will remember a number of important events that happened 50 years ago in our history. Some include, just a few days ago on February 21st was the 50th anniversary of the assassination of Malcolm X. On March 7th, a few days from now, will be the 50th anniversary of Bloody Sunday in Selma, Alabama, where 600 civil rights leaders attempted to cross the Edmund Pettus Bridge to march for justice due to the killing of an unarmed man, Jimmy Lee Jackson, who was protesting there weeks earlier. On March 9th, 50 years ago, Martin Luther King joined that Selma movement and had to turn back those who were marching on that day and again on March 21st to save their lives. But on March 25th, 25,000 people joined that movement and they were able to successfully make that march from Selma to Montgomery. Also 50 years ago, President Lyndon B. Johnson signed the Voting Rights Act into law, which made it illegal to continue discriminatory practices that kept blacks from having the right to vote. But something else also important happened 50 years ago. This college was founded. And not long after that, this college then had the courage to do what was right and to integrate this college. And some of those people who integrated that college went on to be esteemed ministers and some who work here today helping our students. Those who had that courage paved the way not only for our current students, staff, and faculty, but administration like myself also, and we on this day also commemorate you. We have come a long way, but we must continue to persevere to continue to move our college and our communities forward. As a community college, it is our responsibility to not forget the significance of our past, but for all of us, each one of us to use our lives to continue to be build pathways for others for their future. So again, thank you to Reverend Benjamin, the Diversity Council, the Office of Institutional Effectiveness and Quality Enhancement Plan, and particularly to Ms. Glennie Culliver for providing us with such wonderful food today, and also the esteemed members of Phi Delta Kappa, uh, our local chapter here, Honorary uh, Honor Society for uh, Black Educators. But I also want to thank each one of you who are present, who have been part of making this such a great celebration. my thanks to Reverend Benjamin for that awesome presentation. It was great. We want to, to bow our heads, please. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to come before you today. We thank you for all the blessings that you've given us and this opportunity to come together and learn more about our history as a culture and as the United States. Lord, as we leave here, we, we, want you, we want you to pray your traveling mercies over all of us that we get back to our safe places. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen.